Shalom Aleichem, Nassal Aleichem, Nassal Aleichem, Nassal Aleichem, Yossi Nigri. Yossi Nigri. Lucida Surfaces. Uh, what's your role in Lucida Surfaces? Sales. Sales. Um, who started the Lucida Surfaces? Who's the, who's, the, who's the owner? So we have, the owners are Moishe Halpern and Eli Steinmetz. Eli Steinmetz and Moishe Halpern, I have to say both of them, this order. Yeah. They started the company about 12 years ago. They saw lack of vinyl flooring when they were in the construction industry before already and they, they saw the lack of vinyl flooring so they decided to open up a vinyl flooring company. They just started with one product called the Timber Core, which 12 years ago was a big, a big chiddush in the construction industry. And just as a side point, I visited a, a uh, site, let's say, a place that had the timber core installed 12 years ago, and it looks brand new. That's the quality that we have. So just had to say that. What's your background? How old are you? <clears throat> I'm 30 years old. Married kids? Bar Hashem. Both. Amazing. And um, what's your background? What do you do beforehand? I grew up, I was born and raised in Brazil. Uh, I went to yeshiva, to the whole system, smicha, everything. Shlicha, smicha. I thought every Chabad is a rabbi, no one knows that. Yeah, go ahead. I went to shlich, actually shlichas in California. I'll say, I did for sure, about that. And I decided to do a different type of shlichas. For example, I went to a trade show in Rochester, New York. I'm in my booth, we had a booth over there. And uh, a guy comes over with an Israeli accent, I, he's Jewish, I was... 10 minutes before Shkia. Lou, did you put on filling today? And of course we put on filling right there and there. How long were you in this company for? A year. A year. So first of all, you, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when, when you come to, the, come to the trade show, everyone has a, a, um, a lanyard. You have your own lanyard. And, your own, and our own yarmulke. To match your yarmulke. And like the stripe on your socks is like pink also. I, I mean, I don't have how you, how you, this is a whole major plan. Is that part of your vibe with the leather on the jacket? It's like a whole thing. Is, is that your thing? My outfit is my wife, not me, so. Yeah, your wife. <laughs> let's, let's give her credit, not me. <laughs> okay, if you want. Ask me where I got the jacket from? No idea. No, okay, fine, it's a vibe. Whatever she's doing, it works. It definitely stands out. Thank you very no, much. No, which is good in sales. It's obviously very important. And how, what do you feel about so far? How are you enjoying it? The vibe is amazing. Uh, new customers, old customers, potential, even people who are not in the industry that we are selling and we can provide them service, they stop by, they talk to us, they, they present themselves, and it's just a very nice thing to see everyone together with the same goal. And I, know, I noticed now the Brazilian accent, as you pointed out. The Brazilian accent. You have it in English. After, after a few minutes, after, they, yeah, very good. everyone and realizes. So, so tell me about you know, the struggle in your business, right? Essentially, people would use flooring for one of two reasons. Obviously, new construction, or trying to renovate. Like, for example, I happen to put a vinyl flooring in my office. I put a... I know, let's assume it's um, 2,000 square feet, right, of vinyl flooring. So, you know, we, we, I called the company, they're great. I never heard of you guys, right? So the challenge is essentially, I think, in your business to A, be in people's face, and they will know to use you when they want to use you, and B, making the sale on the spot. So how do you balance the two? A, to get people to use you to do something new, and B, to stay in their mind, right? Because those are really the two aspects of sales, yeah? Let's build about it. Two aspects of sales in any business is A, getting someone to do something now, obviously, and B, remember you when they need you. So how do you balance the two of them? So we're talking about, so in a case like yours that you just brought up, your office, you're not gonna deal with us. I am the supplier and I'm the distributor. You, I'm, you're going to deal with a flooring company who is gonna install and sell you, we're going to provide them the floor. Okay, where do you get, you? So but you also don't manufacture. We manufacture. Are you guys manufacture? We manufacture out of, uh, out of uh, the US and Asia and nice. some places in Europe. And uh, we bring here, we have a warehouse in Wayne, New Jersey. We don't sell to end consumers. That's not our goal. We don't want to do that because we don't want to, we want to supply the vendors with our product. So when you ask us why you didn't, never heard of us, because you're not in the flooring business. Gotcha. But uh, you take a flooring company in Lakewood or in Brooklyn or in Muncie, Monroe, even Newark, Hoboken, I have a couple of clients, they know of us and they, they like our product, so when they're gonna go to the customer, it's their choice what to show them. They can show us our company. So how do you stand that in that space, other than, other than design and price? So, the main focus on the sale of, for us is selling, not selling the product, is selling ourselves and selling our, let's say, customer service that we give them. So, very, 
some days I go to, on Monday I was in Albany, New York. Why? Because I have a lot of customers there. I want them to know that I still exist. Shoot them a text, some here and, here and there, send them presents. They have to know the Lucid exists and we're taking care of them and they will take care of us. They are our customers. And so, so, so again, not, not to mitigate what you're saying, but you, you're really saying for a certain term, salesman talk, which is the correct thing to say, right? 100%. I'm not disagreeing with that. But the question is when you're coming, and of course, I would assume you're an awesome, geschmacky looking guy, probably do good service too. So once someone's starting with you, I'm assuming you give good service. But how would you convince someone to even try that out? Like, for example, one strategy that I advise people when it comes to sales is to convince someone to take one product, one thing. Just let me show you how awesome I am, right? But I'm curious, what is your idea? What is your strategy when you're trying to get a supplier that's been dealing with themselves? Are you simply saying, hey, look, take another SKU, give another option to the client? Like, what's your sales which you actually get them to use you? Give me one project. Start with one project. Give me one, it could be 200 square feet, it can t be 50,000 square feet. Give me one project. You're not gonna have fun with the delivery, you're not gonna have fun with the installation, you're not gonna have fun with uh, if something, if you're missing something, you're gonna have that afterwards. So. Give me one chance, and it's, the future is taken care of. I, I stand behind my, pro, my product and my service. Does your company give you leeway? Like, for example, you want to send a certain amount to a company, you want to send a little extra just to be safe, right? Does your Lucida company, you, you work for them, do they give you the, the option, to give you some carte blanche to be generous? Like, within a company, how much range do you have to do things? You know, you're a salesman, how much do they, do they help you? What's it like we have, we, we have our own, I, I like to say that we are a team of each, each one of the salespeople have their own business. Meaning, if I have a customer that I know that I'm not gonna be able to deal with, or it's not in my area, I'll give to someone else for them to deal with because they have more sprach with this type of people or this projects or this type of floors. They give us freedom to work with the pricing. And the product itself, if you need 200 square feet, we always give you, first of all, we're gonna, when. The flooring guy knows how to measure and how to how to order. So if he needs, if the room is 200 square feet, he's going to put 10% more because he's going to need a cut here and there. He's going to need to make. And if you have extra, we have I need 100 square foot for my for my office, in my house. Can you hook me up? Not worth it for you. I don't want, I'm just hooking me up now because you're schmoozing. No, not worth it for you. What do you mean by that? Because you're going to be cutting the middle guy who's going to be able to help you better. In it. five years from now, in 10 years from now, you have a problem. Oh, in one plank. You're gonna call me, I'm gonna tell you, I'll give you a plank, and what are you gonna do with it? You're gonna call the guy to, that installed. So deal with him the whole thing. When an installer, when a flooring company charges you extra for the floor, for the products, meaning I'm selling him, I'm gonna say a, a crazy number not to give out the yeah. prices, because it's, it's not needed. Uh, he's gonna tell you $10 a square foot of certain product. I'm selling to him at nine dollars. He's making a one dollar profit on the product. The one dollar profit is the time that he took to call me to figure out everything. So he makes and installation money. It's his labor that he makes money right. out of it. So it's not worth the dollar. It's not worth you saving a dollar with the, the headache you're gonna have. Afterwards. I got you. Very good. Listen, it's a pleasure being with you. I, I love the whole vibe and look. You're fantastic. Yeah, a lot Thank of us love.